video, I want to go over a program that I converted to using procedures. This program will accept a list of items and prices, then it will calculate sales tax and it will go to display. So we begin by making an array and I've just arbitrarily set it to a size of 25, which will be large enough bounds for anything that I'm doing in this testing. Then we initialize the array by using a for loop of zero to 24 and setting each item name equal to quote, quote, which is basically a null space. That's typically what I'll initialize a string variable to. Then we create an array named item cost and we initialize all of the indexes, everything for item cost as zero. We've set two more variables, total cost and tax amount, and all of these are global variables. Now, global variables, depending on the program, you may or may not need to pass, and it's language dependent. With Visual Logic, it's allowing me to directly refer to my arrays without passing them. Most languages will pass an array by reference, so it actually points to the memory location of the array. Depending on the language, you can just declare it as a global variable and use it. A global variable can be seen by any procedure in the program. My other variables did not work reliably without passing them, so you'll see that I do actually pass variables in some of the different procedures. Now I have my first procedure here, which is get items. To go look at it, I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to click on go to procedure declaration. And you can see that here, I have an input item. This is acting as our priming input, and I'm making it, um, it's actually just named item. And then I'm also declaring a variable named i, which I've initialized to zero, and I stands for index, it's going to be the index of my array. Now I'm checking several different options because the user is asked to enter done when they're done entering. So I check for item not equal to done in lowercase, done in uppercase, and done as a mix with an uppercase and then lowercase letters. This is not exhaustive, but they don't have an option for making it case insensitive or to move everything over it's pretty good for the limitations of the program, so that it'll work if I type done either in upper or lowercase letters. As long as the user does not type in done, they'll take that item and store it in item name i, then they'll input the item cost, they will calculate total cost equaling total cost plus the new item cost, and then they'll put a new item, and at this point we will increment i and we'll check to see if they've entered done. And that's the end of get items. To go back, I can click on procedures and I could go back to main or I could go directly to my next procedure, which is taxes. This is gonna calculate my taxes. Here I have set the tax rate as 3%. You may be wondering why as a programmer, I wouldn't just do tax amount equals total cost times 0.03. Well, this has to do with program maintenance. By labeling the tax rate as tax rate and setting it to 0.03, if they were to increase the tax rate later or decrease it, though I've never personally seen taxes go down, they could go in and they'd know immediately that this is tax rate, they could change it here, and then even if it appears more than one place in the program, you have that set up for the entire program. So we're calculating our tax amount by calculating our total cost by our tax rate. Then we can go back to our main method. And then we have the final portion of our program which will output the tax amount. And so here, again, we're setting C equal to zero. That's just our variable, our counter. And as long as C is less than I. Well, where is that coming from? If you remember, I was incrementing I for each item that was entered into our array. So that gives me the array length. Most programs will actually have a procedure or a library method stored that will let you get array.length, and then you go as far as there is things in the array. Here, we know how much of the array was used because we were incrementing i. So as long as we only go up to that level, we'll show everything that was entered and have no empty spaces or zeros showing on screen. 
So we'll do output for everything that was actually entered, and we'll increment C each time. And when C becomes equal to I, that means that we've displayed everything that was entered, and we're done. And then we get to our output, and you'll notice that I'm formatting our currency. I have the format currency amount, format currency taxes, and format currency amount due. And so we have taken a program that could have been a large and difficult program to follow and broken it into logical steps, which we separated into procedures. And that can make program maintenance much easier. And each one, while we could have done things together, I wanted each one to do a single item. So get items, it's doing one thing. So everything in that procedure is said to be cohesive. It belongs together. There's nothing in there that doesn't fit that get items. Taxes only calculates taxes, and our output just does output. You want procedures to do one thing. It's a tightly cohesive procedure, and that's the way to program it. So let's take a look at it working. Please enter the name of an item in quotes. We're going to put in socks. We'll put in $7.99. We'll put in shoes, we'll put in $35.99, we'll put in handbag, we'll put in $75, and then we'll enter in done. And so Visual Logic doesn't really let you line things up neatly in columns, but it does give you socks, shoes, handbag. It only displays the ones that you actually had entries for. It gives you a total. It gives you taxes. And then it gives you the combination of taxes plus total. I could go one step further. This would actually be better if instead of displaying it on the screen, I could have also created this as printable output by putting it into an output file, which we could then print to a PDF. But for this purpose, it is giving everything that was put in creating a total, calculating tal taxes, and calculating the amount due. So you can see that by adding procedures, your program becomes broken down into logical steps, making it easier to follow and maintain.